Medievalism has been a prominent feature of the last 250 or so years. It's a really complex, very multifaceted cultural phenomenon, but I want to talk about just one aspect of it in particular here, and that's the rediscovery of a whole range of medieval texts in the 19th century. How did this come about? Well, the late 1700s sees the emergence of modern linguistic science, a discipline known as philology. Now, philology basically studies how languages change over time and how they relate to each other. And some of the most influential figures of the last couple of centuries were, in fact, philologists. One half of the Brothers Grimm, Jacob Grimm, was a very prominent philologist. J.R.R. Tolkien, another philologist. Nietzsche, too, he started out as a philologist. Now, study of the classical languages, Latin and Greek, had been pretty well established. But study of other European languages like English, like German, had been relatively limited before this point. This meant that medieval texts from those cultures were often very hard to read and had largely been forgotten. You've seen what Old English looks like. It's not the easiest thing to get your head around. But the rise of philology changed all that. Suddenly, a whole range of medieval texts were being deciphered, transcribed from their manuscripts and published. The Old English text Beowulf is a really good example of this. In 1815, the first edition of Beowulf was published, bringing a text that had been forgotten for the best part of eight centuries back to public attention. A whole range of other texts followed throughout the century, and many of them were initially published for their linguistic interest rather than for the stories they told. But the stories themselves begin to steal the show pretty quickly. And some of the most significant art of the 19th century draws heavily on these stories, from Wagner's operas to the paintings of the Pre-Raphaelites. Now, it's not only scholarly concerns that are driving the rediscovery of these texts. The 19th century also sees the rise of linguistic nationalism. The notion that a shared language implies a shared national history and shared national territory. In many modern European languages, including English, the very earliest surviving material dates from the Middle Ages. So if you are, as these guys were, interested in studying the history of your language, the history of your literature, then you have to study the Middle Ages. So scholarly and political forces come together to bring these texts back to public attention. 